The Lord be with you. Welcome to this time of worship. We begin this morning by acknowledging that the land we stand upon is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the neutral peoples, as well as the Chippewa of Nawash, the Odawa, and the Saugeen Ojibwe people. We recognize and value the First Peoples' continued stewardship of land and water. We acknowledge that the treaties of the past still impact our work toward truth and reconciliation. This territory was subject to treaties under which multiple nations agreed to care for the land and resources by the Great Lakes in peace. We also acknowledge and recognize the Upper Canada Treaty signed with regard to this land, which include Treaty No. 29 and Treaty No. 45 and a half. Our role as treaty people commit us to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation, gratitude, and respect with our Indigenous neighbors. Welcome to worship this morning. And welcome to those who are joining us through our live stream or through um, our broadcast. We trust that the Holy Spirit unites us and brings us together. We uh, continue to be able to remove our masks if you so choose. Uh, if you're more comfortable wearing one, absolutely, that's fine. We just ask you to wear a mask when you're moving around the building. And um, coffee hour has returned. We had quite a few people out for coffee hour last week. It was wonderful. Uh, they had to cut the cake smaller. So that's a great sign of wanting to be together again. Um, and uh, this morning, uh, Sheila was able to put the coffee on and get it all ready. But if we could have a couple of people stay to help clean up, is there a couple of people this morning willing to, to stay and help clean up? Laura and Joan, great. Thank you very much. And there is a sign-up sheet by the um, kitchen, and uh, coffee hour, I think, is something that people enjoy, and I think it's an important time of connecting with one another, um, but we do need people who are willing to help with it, and the more people that volunteer, the fewer uh, uh, Sundays it falls on, on one or two people. And this morning, following worship, um, is an opportunity to uh, begin our learning for uh, the AFFIRM process. And you can see that there's some information there, as there was some information in um, the email on Friday. And this will be taking place in the parlor after coffee hour. So um, it, it was going to be in the hall, but it's quite difficult to hear one another talk in the hall, so it's been moved up to the parlor for those who, um, I encourage you, it was um, a fruitful time of learning and listening uh, the other night, and um, uh, will be a fruitful time. And uh, thanks to Kay King and Kathy Weeb earlier this week, the UCW cupboard UCW cupboard that um, also had lots of fishes and loaves stuff in it um, was cleaned out because there was uh, stuff there uh, from before the pandemic and then we had two years when we weren't really using it uh, and so some things needed to be cleared out, cleaned out, organized. So there is a trolley cart in the fellowship hall um, with items that we don't think we need anymore. So if there's anything there you would like to take, feel free. It's all free. Come to church and get free stuff. Please. <laughs> and also I've been asked to announce um, that the spaghetti supper that was to take place today at Camp Menesetang, uh, one of their big fundraisers, um, has been postponed to uh, June the 26th. So uh, please take note of that. Let's join together and raise our voices in song and sing together number 312, Praise with Joy.
<clears throat> Please join me in our responsive call to worship. You are music. You are life. Wonderfully radiant, deep, mysterious, you are alive in everything, and yet you are unknown to us. You have come for us in history, O Trinity. We have come to add our voices in praise. Let us worship. Let us bring our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Let us pray. O God of the universe, from the very beginning, <clears throat> from your very being, you called forth the universe and created all that we behold. From your very being, you created us a little lower than the angels and you hold us all in your hands. From your very being, you created us in your image, so that we may live in you and you in us. So we gather in your presence in the name of Christ. Prepare us to receive your guidance, so that we might hear your word for our lives. Open our eyes, <clears throat> so that we might see your presence in our brothers and sisters, around us and in our neighbors as well. O God of salvation, from your being, you gave us your Son who embodies your love for the world. Yet he came not just to teach and lead us, but to show us the face of your love for the world and to offer us forgiveness. Lead us, we pray, in your ways of confession and forgiveness in our own lives, in our life together, in our world. O God who sustains us, from your love and grace you have gifted us with your Holy Spirit, that we may be assured of your presence, that we may be led by your will, that all in our life and world may be holy. Praise is on our lips and in our hearts. O Holy Trinity, in humility we come, in confession, for we know that we have turned from your spirit of love and that we have not always followed where you have called that we have relied too much on our own power. Forgive us and lead us in your ways as we lift up our silent prayers. All this we pray in the name of Christ who taught us to pray together singing. Thank you. 
brothers and sisters in Christ, out of confession we come. Receive and know the blessing of God, that in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to turn and greet one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Would Jamie and Ellie and Donovan like to come to the front? seat there if you like. Do you want to have a seat on the pew? Ooh, that was a little loud, wasn't it? <laughs> I need my notes. My memory isn't what it used to be. What's this? It's a dandelion, right? There's, there's lots of dandelions around, isn't there? Although they're mostly done. I know there were a lot of dandelions in my lawn, but not so many in my neighbor's lawn. <laughs> I don't think he was very happy that there were so many dandelions in my lawn. But that's all right. I like the humble dandelion. Do you like the dandelions? And, and who else likes dandelions? They're important for, yeah, Do you, you like them. They're important for bees. Bees really like dandelions and bees are important. So 
It's a pretty amazing flower, isn't it? Often here at church, we talk about God, and we talk about God as creator, because God is so big, our imaginations can't, can't even conceive of all of the things that God is. But one of the things that we say about God is that God is creator. Because God made all that we see, including you. God made you, with the help of your parents. Or maybe God helped your parents, right? And we're all, uh, we're all unique, and we're all important. And so I thought maybe to try and talk about how that is, let's talk about this little humble dandelion, something that some people spend a lot of energy trying to get rid of, but really. So do you see the leaves? Mm -hmm. When it rains, water flows down the leaves and down into the root. Isn't that amazing that it was created with its own little uh, way to get water into the plant so the plant can grow and have flowers? And because the dandelions are almost done, I couldn't find very many this morning, and when I tried to pull this one out, I, I didn't get the roots. So have you ever pulled a dandelion out of the grass? Yeah, and it has a great big long root, doesn't it? Like, that looks like that, right? So the water goes down the leaves and into the, into the root, and you can pick off a dandelion, and what will happen in a couple of days? Do you know? It'll grow back. That's right. If you don't pull the root out, it'll grow back. Even a piece of the root, it'll grow back. And so people like to battle with with dandelions because they're so tough, aren't they? It doesn't look like it's a very tough thing, does it? No. It's kind of pretty. It's a pretty tough thing. And look at the stem. Mm -hmm. What's not happening when I do that? It goes down and up. Right. It's not breaking, right? So when it's windy or blowing or rainy, it's not going to break, right? It can stand up. Trees sometimes break in the wind, don't they? Because they can't move like this. But a dandelion probably isn't going to break in the wind. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yes, and then what's this a picture of? When it's seeding. When it's seeding, that's right. Because this pretty yellow flower, sometimes right overnight, will turn into this, right? And what are these? They're seeds, right? And what does the wind do? It takes, them. It, ta <laughs> it takes them to my neighbor, that's right. That's why he loves me so much. <laughs> because the wind will take them wherever the wind goes, right? We can't tell it where to go. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So the seeds find their own little places where they need to grow. I think God the Creator is pretty amazing. Don't you? And I think that God the Creator that made you and your dad and all the people here and me is pretty amazing. And that's part of the reason why we come to church, so that we can think about how amazing God is and our minds can explode, our minds can grow, just like the seeds on this dandelion, right? Can change and grow and learn new things. And, you know, kind of like the seeds on the dandelion, we're supposed to go out there and spread God's love, just like the wind. That, that's a bigger task. Maybe I'll save that for another lesson. But let's just say, God is pretty amazing. And the God who made all of the wonderful things about this dandelion made you and loves you always. And you know what? 
Arminta is downstairs so she, for a Sunday school lesson today. That's pretty, and you know what? We have coffee hour after church today. We, last Sunday was the first time after two years. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing too, isn't it? So we'll sing together our song and you can go and learn some more lessons about how wonderful and amazing God is. Okay, let's sing together God who's almighty word. This morning, uh, Wayne Bryant is doing our scripture readings. Good morning. Our first reading is taken from uh, the Old Testament, and it's Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 to 8. And it's taken from the Revised Standard Version, updated edition. And this chapter is about the gifts of wisdom. Does not wisdom call and understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way at the crossroads, she takes her stand beside the gates in front of the town at the entrance of the portals she cries out, to you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all who live. That ends our first reading. Our psalm this morning is from Psalm 8. And you can find it on page 732 in your bio. And our refrain is, O oh God, our God, how glorious is your name in all the earth. From the lip 
lips of infants and children, your praises reach up to the heavens. You have set up strong against your hosts to draw the enemy and the avenger. When I look to the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, you have set in their places. What are we mortals that you should be minded of us, mere human beings that you should care for us? You have made us little less than divine and crowned us with glory and honor. You have made us rulers of all your creation and put all things under our feet. All sheep and cattle, all creatures of the wild, the birds of the air, fish in the sea, and all that make their way through the waters. Thank you very much, Wayne. And uh, the mix-up in the Proverbs reading is my fault. Like I said, I, my mem I should never try and do something from memory. When June uh, emailed me and asked what the readings were, I didn't check. And so that was my mistake. So I will pick up the final verses uh, from chapter 8 of Proverbs, uh, beginning at verse 22, uh, because that is part of the passage that I'm preaching. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. And the reading from Romans, I'm reading from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> in, the name of <clears throat> in the name of the Creator, for the sake of the Son, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This is uh, Trinity Sunday, if you hadn't figured that out already. 
The Sunday when we think about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, one in three, the theological dance that helps us to expand our imagination of holy, divine, creator. At its root, when we think about God in Trinity, it is about relationship or community, as one of the hymns earlier had as one of its lines. The relationship of the divine within the divine self, God in relationship with Jesus, Jesus in relationship with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit in relationship with God. But what is less philosophical and perhaps somewhat easier to grasp is the relationship of the divine with creation and the created. It is more tangible after all. Which is not only about us, but about all of creation. Okay, so maybe it isn't all that easy to grasp either. As people of faith, we are part of a great circle of pilgrims, witnesses, ancestors, and mystics who guide us into unity with God, the God who holds us, the God who holds all of creation in love. The reading from Proverbs speaks of wisdom personified. Often, wisdom is interpreted as ruah in Hebrew, or spirit. And the passage gives us a glimpse into Holy Trinity, or that community of creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Wisdom seems like something you find after many years. Something elusive like that old hermit in a cave in the desert. You might have to fast if you want to get a glimpse of her. Or trek up to an altitude of 20,000 feet to a Buddhist monastery in Nepal. Or maybe you need to lead a contemplative life and do lots of reading. That's why Kevin is wise. He does lots of reading and contemplating. And I, I'm not totally poking fun. I, it's quite true. He's very wise. So it is surprising to open up the book of Proverbs and find wisdom in the busiest place in town. She is beside the gates, at the entrance of the portals, perhaps even at the market where people go to sell things and to buy things. We can imagine perhaps someone hawking watches to her left and a hot dog vendor to her right. She's indiscriminate. She calls out to everyone and anyone, offering her companionship. Offering her companionship to anyone being available, and she is loud, a woman yelling in the street. Now, the street corner is hardly a place for a Dharma talk or enlightened silence. Yet here is wisdom calling to the people in the midst and busyness of daily life. And it's in this poem, the same one, that wisdom speaks of the relationship with God. The Lord created me at the beginning of God's work, the first of God's acts long ago, wisdom says. Before the song of creation, wisdom abided in God. Listen to this beautiful biblical poetry. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. 
Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the world, then, wisdom says, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I daily was, I was daily his delight, playing before him always, playing in God's inhabited world and delighting in the human race. So over the course of one passage, we are invited to hold two opposite ideas at once. On the one hand, that wisdom God the Spirit encounters us in the mess and the routine of our daily lives. Concerned as we are with what to eat, how to love, how we will contribute to the world around us, how we will be in relationship with one another, the world and with God. And on the other hand, we are invited to see wisdom as part of the Creator before creation. Our minds can only glimpse the magnitude of the grandeur or the immensity. Perhaps, though, what unifies the visions of the holy in this passage is delight and joy. I was daily his delight, wisdom says in verse 30. Rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. God delights in us. Joy comes in the moments of connection with holy, with sacred, and also comes in moments of connection with others. Wisdom tells us it happens in the street, in the streets, it happens in the midst of life. And it happens when we contemplate the glories and mysteries of God the Creator. The poet Malcolm Geet is uh, the one to whom I owe the title of my sermon. He has written a wonderful poem called The Triune Poet. And we'll watch him say it in a moment. But part of it says, the triune poet makes us for his glory and makes us each the other's inspiration. He calls us out of darkness, chaos, chance to improvise a music of our own, to sing the chord that calls us to dance. Three notes resounding from a single tone to sing the end in whom we all begin, our God beyond, beside us, and within. I don't know about you, but the grind, the absolute grind of the past two and a half years of pandemic, war, and violence leaves me longing for more moments of unadulterated, glorious delight and joy. Sadly, I can give you no recipe for that. There is no how-to book. But wisdom tells us, often it can come to us and meet us on the street corner, in a happenstance meeting with a friend or a happy encounter with a stranger, Wisdom encounters us with delight in the midst of relationship, even if those relationships are challenging or difficult. 
It happens when we have connected with one another or with a group of others. And I find comfort in the reminder that I am in relationship with God and that that relationship is held in the midst of all of my other relationships with family and friends and church family, strangers, community, as a citizen, as a human. And that there is holy music that invites all of us to dance and find delight despite the darkness and the chaos. That's where hope and joy and delight resides. So I'll give you an opportunity to hear the poet Malcolm Geet reading his poem. So it's called Trinity Sunday, and this answers exactly your question. If the triune poet was inviting us in, through creation, what would that invitation be? Is exactly what it would be. In the beginning, not in time or space, but in the quick before both space and time, in life, in love, in coherent grace, in three in one, in one in three, in rhyme, in music, in the whole creation story, in his own image, his imagination, the triune poet makes us for his glory and makes us each the other's inspiration. He calls us out of darkness, chaos, chance, to improvise a music of our own, to sing the chord that calls us to the dance, three notes resounding from a single tone, to sing the end in whom we all begin, our God, beyond, beside us, and within. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us raise our voices by singing together. Number 135 and more voices called by earth and sky.
It is so lovely to see your faces, and it is so lovely to hear your voices singing. Hallelujah. We continue to worship by making our offering to God, and I know that we aren't passing the plate through uh, the sanctuary, but please take this moment of reflection. Loving God, with thanks and in humility, we present our offerings to you. We offer ourselves with our gifts. May you expand our vision to embrace new possibilities. And may these offerings reach beyond the barriers of our former thinking and doing. In the spirit of Christ, we would pray and live. Amen. mission, uh, but the general council um, approved a few months ago um, kind of a new uh, theme, I guess you could say, for the church, uh, and so that, this is a video about that. Deep spirituality. Deep spirituality. In spirituality profound. Deep spirituality. Deep spirituality. Bold discipleship. Une vie de disciple Bold dynamique. Discipleship. Bold discipleship. Bold discipleship. Une quête audacieuse de justice. Daring justice. Daring justice. Daring justice. Daring justice. These are words that express the intent of all the major statements made by the United Church of Canada over the last number of years. We live in a world that is largely individualistic. And when I think of discipleship, I think of commitment to God, commitment to a life following Christ, but also commitment to one another. It's really about how we're working to live and do our ministry together as this United Church of Canada. We have to dare to love. We have to dare to dream of a world in which love reigns. And I think this is the ultimate test for modern Christians. Whether it's men in the world, Justice Seeking, Justice Living Church towards 2025. It's found in our Song of Faith and in the new creed. Ceci sont les piliers de qu'est-ce que ça veut dire d'être l'Église de l'avenir. 
C'est sur cette base que nous pourrions être capables de répondre à l'appel de Dieu. These words. Deep spirituality. Bold discipleship. Daring justice. Is an expression of who we are as the United Church of Canada. This is our call. Let's make it our commitment. I should note um, that I believe this Sunday is the 95th anniversary of the United Church of Canada, 97th anniversary of the United Church of Canada. And in 2025, the United Church will celebrate 100 years. Let us pray. From mystery into mystery, you invite us to dream, to sing of that which we can barely comprehend, but yet calls us. Encounter us, O Holy One, in moments of joy, anguish, repentance, and hope. Grant us courage and energy, we pray, to live as your people that you have touched with love bigger than all of creation. Help us to live as your people, called to tend and to care for others in the world with which you have gifted us. Thank you for this church of which we are a part. For moments when courage has proclaimed justice, we thank you. For moments when discipleship has been a powerful witness, we thank you. For moments when justice has been done to alleviate suffering in the world, we thank you. Guide and lead this united church, we pray. Lord, we pray this day for all who are facing war as they seek shelter from violence that surrounds them, as they hope for peace and security in the midst of destruction. We pray, O oh Lord, that you may be with those from this congregation who need your presence and your help, for those who are grieving for those who are dying, for those who are facing challenges that feel overwhelming. May you bring peace. Hear their names in the silence of our prayers. Help us, O oh God, to hear the music of the Spirit, to dance in the hope of Christ, and to offer the grace of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is number 315, Holy, Holy, Holy.
now, as you go from this place, hold the mystery of the Trinity who calls you in love and who promises that we do not walk alone. Go in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen.